I still get goosebumps when I hear <laughs> that song. Start, you know, it used to be every day. Now it's only once a week. It's such a shame. But uh, yeah, I still get so, so excited. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Nice to have you with us this morning. Thank you for saying hi in the chat already. And uh, I see Kubus is leading the way. He says, life is not a race to an end destination, but rather a journey to self-actualization. So uh, that's uh, amazing. And uh, hitting the nail on the head there, Quivis. <coughs> really, I've, I haven't been this excited about an episode in a very long time. Uh, well, at least an episode where I'm going to share something with you. And uh, took me the entire week until, <laughs> until last night to come up with a topic. So uh, I posted and shared the episode a little bit late yesterday, which is not, uh, not good for marketing purposes. But be that as it may, uh, here we are today. What are we talking about? Well, slowing down to go faster. So uh, really excited for, for that one. Good morning, Yaku. It was nice seeing you yesterday and uh, saying yes, he agrees with Kurvis there. Uh, Adrian, good <coughs> It feels like it's been a while, my friend. Uh, hope you're well. Uh, please stay to the end. All the Cape Town people, I've got an announcement. So, so stay to the end, right? Uh, Mel Jacoby, good morning. Mel, it's also been a long time. I hope you're well. Uh, thank you so much for, for saying hi and for being with us this morning. Arun, good morning. It's been a while with you as well. Uh, so good morning. Herman Lowe, goeiemorgen. Uh, very nice to see you as well. It's also been a bit of a while. And then Mark, good morning. Really nice to see you as well. I hope you enjoy this one. And uh, then Hendrik Crawford, always here. Good morning, Hendrik. Thank you very much for, for joining us. All right, with that, uh, if I'm going to go on saying hi to you. Oh, there's Razan as well. Good morning, Razan from Dalström nogal. Um, so yeah, good good thing that we're not using our camera, say. Eh? Um, so yeah, good stuff. Enjoy. Um, with that, let's go over to the new studio and hear what David Kopp has for us this morning. Good morning, everyone, um, on this fine Friday morning. Um, and to get into it, let's start with an announcement from the South African Revenue Services, who has announced that taxpayers will be able to file their returns from the 1st of July, 2021. Um, and those uh, filing online have until the 23rd of November to file. And if you're a provisional taxpayer, um, you can file until the 28th of January, 2022. Um, so by now, all employers should have filed their, their returns or they've got until the 31st of May. And uh, there's a big announcement on SARS's website too that uh, if you don't file your reconciliation as an employer, you could face a fine or jail time. Um, so if you do have clients out there who, who uh, run their companies, uh, make sure that that filing is done so there's not fines. Um, a significant number of taxpayers this year will also be auto-assessed. So this is something that SARS started last year. Uh, based on the information they have on file, they will send an auto assessment, which the taxpayer can then either uh, accept or and then they don't have to file the tax return or if they've got to update the information to do that. So again, uh, right into tax filing season, uh, starting from July 2021 and going to January 2022. Then uh, the grapevine is talking again, um, and at this time it's talking about APSA Group, who's said to be in talks to sell part of its asset management uh, to Sunlum and African Rabo Capital Investments, which could create a form of more than 900 billion rand of assets um, under management. Um, at this stage, I'll say the grapevine, because none of the parties have officially confirmed um, any talks, and all the news reports that have come out are about people in the know who do, do, don't want to be identified because it's apparently uh, a private talks at this point. So let's just watch uh, the news for that. Then the Minister of Finance, Mr. Tito Mbeni, has appointed the first Ombud Council Board and the Chief Ombud for the Council. Um, so this is the new financial Ombud system in terms of the Financial Sector Regulation Act. Um, Ms. Eileen Mayer has been appointed as the Chief Ombud, and then there are seven uh, Board of Directors on the Ombud Council. The Ombud Council will have oversight powers over the strategy and industry ombuds, including the pension fund adjudicator, the Ombud for financial services, the credit ombud, the Ombud for long-term insurance, the Ombud for short-term insurance, the Ombudsman for the banking services, as well as the Johannesburg Stock Exchange Ombud. Um, so let's hope that this is a positive step towards consolidating all those Ombud schemes and, and giving uh, consumers um, some direction of where they need to go 
um, if there is a complaint. And then uh, to end off the nude broadcast, uh, some good news. Uh, diamonds are no longer a girl's best friend. In fact, peanut butter is. So in his quest to mimic conditions deep inside the earth, uh, Dan Frost of the Bayerisches Geo Institute in Germany has discovered a way to turn peanut butter and carbon dioxide into diamonds. So essentially the process takes oxygen from CO2, leaving behind carbon that under intense pressure forms diamonds. So to replicate this in a lab, scientists uh, subjected carbon rich materials such as peanut butter to high pressures and, and, and created diamonds for a short period until some volatile hydrogen entered into it. So I would not suggest right now that you should substitute your engagement ring with a jar of peanut butter um, because it's almost impossible to replicate this using home appliances. So thank you very much for listening and everyone enjoy the rest of your Friday and the weekend. Awesome stuff. Thank you, David. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, hopefully back next week. And uh, hang around because uh, the, the topic we're about to discuss is extremely uh, interesting. And uh, I'm going to make it all about myself today to, to make it easier for others to listen to. So hopefully we'll see. Uh, but have a good one and we'll chat soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Franza. Cool stuff. All right, so with that, let's go over to Norma. And uh, today, Norma is uh, going to talk a little bit to us about confident communication. So let's hear what uh, she has to say. Good morning, I'm glad to be back today. We're talking about confident communication today. So we all know how important communication is just in our daily lives and, and especially in our businesses. So if I ask you what communication is, you most probably will give me a whole page of what you think communication is. And that would ultimately slot into what uh, Tony Robbins has to say about communication. And it all comes down to one thing. So he says that uh, communication is, we, we really communicate for three reasons. So the one reason is to feel good. And if we already feel good, to enhance that feeling. Secondly, is if we don't feel good, we communicate to feel better. And then lastly, to create new results. So why would we want to create new results? To feel better. So every time we communicate, we, we, we build or we destroy. So we don't um, we ourselves don't want to walk away from, from um, communicating, feeling good, but we also want the other person to walk away feeling good. So in order to do that, we confidently need to communicate. So we need to um, communicate what is really inside of us. So there's three parts that play a role in confident communication. It's really what we're thinking, the words we use, and the nonverbal communication. So what we're thinking is... Um, are we coming from a supportive place or a judgmental place? So are we um, curious about what the other person has to say, maybe fascinated by the way this person thinks, um, trying to understand this person, or are we judgmental, trying to see everything where we're different or how this other person is wrong? Secondly is the words we use. So the words that come out can either come from a secure place or an insecure place. So if it's coming from a secure place, it would look like being very respectful, disagreeing with the other person, but honoring that person and honoring that, their opinions, being open um, and being very present. Whereas if those, those words come from a very insecure place, we might be very apologetic. We might be thinking, what, what, how are we going to respond to what this person has to say? Will this person like what we have to say? Um, and obviously not being very present. So we need to know that we add value as well as the other person adds value. And then lastly, our nonverbal communication, so that our bodies don't lie. So if we say something um, our, and our body doesn't agree with it, it will come across like that. So what is our facial expressions like? Maybe what is our hands doing? Um, and even the tonality of our voice. So just to close off with that, if we have the intention to feel good walking away from communication and the other person also walking away from communication and building instead of destroying, we need to confidently convey our message. So to what I've already said, to truly reflect what's in the inside. 
So uh, we have to be aware of what we're thinking, the words that we speak and our body and that all of those things are in alignment. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. And Francois, I'm looking forward to your talk. So thank you, everyone. And I'll see you again next week. Good stuff. Yeah, you're so quick on me now this morning. Like I'm used to having a bit of time to think. <laughs> so well done. Thank you very much, Norma. I love it. Um, and uh, we'll see you back next week. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Stay safe. We'll chat soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. All right. So with that, uh, let's get into, into the feature topic uh, for this morning. And the feature topic for this morning is slowing down or slow down to go faster. So really excited to share this with you. Uh, there's a few things that's been on my mind lately and uh, things that I want to share. And I don't know why this came up for me. Um, yesterday, David was asking me, Francis, so like, <laughs> I'm still waiting for the link, brother. And I said, like, no, don't worry, the, the, the link is coming. I just can't decide on what I'm going to talk about today for the first time in a long time. I can't just decide. Um, and I've got a whole list of topics. And this one just, I don't know, I kept going back to this one. So without any further ado, let's get, let's get into this and, and, and see what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, so, so to get started, um, I mean, like slowing down uh, to to go faster, it's, it's so counterintuitive. It doesn't sound like it's something that actually should even belong in the same sentence. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I just want to see why my, ah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think sort of there's a lot that's happened during during COVID, uh, obviously the lockdowns and everything that's been going on. And I can feel because I've been getting out more and more and more seeing people and clients and so forth. And it's such an enjoyable experience. I didn't realize how much I missed this. But the other thing that I also realized is, you know, we were also happy that we just could stay at home and we didn't have to travel anywhere. You don't sit in your car, you're not wasting time. But if I look at how much your space is now filled with other things to do, the nonstop back-to-back -back meetings, uh, and even, I don't know if you find this, like if you had three face-to-face -face meetings, but you had three Zoom back-to-back -back meetings, like which one, which one actually <laughs> takes the most energy out of you? Which one leaves you the most sort of, oh, I need a break. Um, I'm keen to, to, to hear what you've got to say. So, so in the comments, you can let me know, uh, you know, what your experience is. In my experience, certainly, it is more about the fact that it feels to me like, you know, talking through a camera, communicating through a camera is much more, uh, it takes much more energy. And uh, it's a different experience. And also, you don't have a break in between going from one meeting to the next. Um, I'm often these days a minute or two late for every meeting because people just seem to book things in my diary. And uh, there's no breaks in between. And it's very hard to, 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 to manage that at this point in time. Um, so this is where all this started coming from and what I've been thinking about and, and just yeah, the, the things that I think that I, that I have to share uh, with you. And, and the very first sort of thought that, that came to my mind is a very simple one. And, and this is one about, you know, is this, is this a sprint? Is this a marathon? Or is this a journey that we're on, our daily lives or just our lives in general? What is it really? Because I think we believe that, you know, we need to work hard, we need to do more, we need to just keep going. And, and the more we do, the quicker, we, the quicker we will get there. But it's just, you know, if I can ask you this question, like, I mean, ask myself the question, can I run a 5k at full speed? Well, definitely not in the shape I'm in currently. But even if somebody's in top shape, can they run five kilometers flat out? like flat out, like you would do a 100 meter sprint back in the day when we were so young. Um, you know, are you able to do that? And it's just, it's literally impossible to do that. It is literally, I would love to meet the person that are able to do that. So, and even if we do find somebody that can run five kilometers at full speed, which will be a miracle in my mind, then what about a marathon? You know, a half marathon, 21 kilometers. What about a, a full marathon? 40, I'm not even talking about the comrades. I mean, there's just no way that you can run that marathon like at full speed. You can't. You will not make it. There is no way. But yet we do that in our lives. We run a marathon at full speed without taking a break, without preparation, without doing all the things that you would be doing when you were going to run a 5K, whether it's for fun, for charity, or because you're serious about it. 
the fact of the matter is that our lives are not a sprint. It is a marathon. But it is also more than a marathon. It is actually a journey. And when we, when we miss out on the journey, there's so much that we miss, miss out on. Um, in my mind, journeys are meant to be enjoyed. They are meant to be an experience. That, that's what journeys are about. When you go on a trip, right, you don't want to rush like 200 k's down the highway, apart from the, that, that you'll get arrested if you get caught. You don't want to do that. You want to drive and you want to take in the scenery. You want to stop at places. You want to experience things, move, meet people, eat new food. You want to just be able to come back and tell stories. That's what we do when we go on a trip. But the trip of life seems to be, no, 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 this is marathon at full speed 100% of the time. That, I don't know, that's how I'm experiencing it. And, and I'm quite keen to hear if there's, there's also uh, some of you that may experience, be experiencing the same thing. The other thing about a journey is that it actually bring awareness and gratitude. And I experienced this when I was driving down to Cape Town at the beginning of the year, taking my daughter's car down for her. Um, I was driving through places that I've only heard about. I've never been there. I've, I've never driven through these places because I usually fly down to Cape Town. What an experience just to become aware of just, you know, what is actually going on. And in my mind thinking, she's like all these things are happening while I'm up in Joburg working my butt off. You know, this is happening down here. It's just, it's mind blowing that there's other things going on. People living a completely different life to what I'm, I'm, I'm leading. Becoming aware of things that are so beautiful that it's actually like not so beautiful, but it's actually beautiful because it's not beautiful. It's one of those like amazing things that happen when, when, when you go and travel and you're on this journey. And therefore, I feel like life is more like a journey than it well, should definitely be more than it, uh, uh, it must be more a journey than it is a sprint or a marathon or just giving it everything. There's a story that also come to mind. Ugh, I can't remember where I read this um, or I saw this or however it came to, 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 to me. But there was this guy that went down to this little fishing village uh, where there was a man uh, in his 30s that was fishing every single day. Uh, and, and they used that to... To, to eat and to live. And this person that came there is a business person. He said to him, you know what, like, uh, are you selling the fish? Like, what are you making some money off of this? No, says the guy, no. You know, we just go fish, come back, eat. We just do it to survive. And this business person was saying like, but, but you can do so much more than survive. You can make a business out of this. And the guy said, but why do I want to do that? And he said, well, because then, you know, you can feed more people and you can make money and you can use that money, you know, to buy things and to, to get a better house and to do all of this. And then the guy again says, but like, and, and then wh why, why would I want to do that? And he says, no, because then you can have friends over and you can have nice parties and you can build relationships, you know, and through those relationships, you can build an even bigger business, you know, and you can work. If you work hard, you can really make a lot of money. And then the guy again says, and then, like, like, what then? He says, no, then, like, one day you can sell that business for loads of money and you can retire and then you can just sit back and do nothing and just enjoy your life. And the guy looked at him and he said, but I'm already doing that. Like, why would I want to be, like, doing all this stuff if I'm already having a joyous life if i'm already retired basically whether i'm in my 30s i live i'm happy with what i have why do i want to give up a lot of time in my life in order to to get back to where i am right now it just doesn't make sense and that is quite a powerful story uh, as far as this is this is uh, concerned so so my question is why am i racing through all of this why am i racing through all of this like I don't know, like maybe somebody has got, got some answers. I'm, I'm quite keen. Let me just quickly jump to the, to the comments um, and just see. Um, I see people are talking about other stuff here. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Adrian says, well, in terms of my, my calendar app, x.ai is a great calendar app that uses AI and you can set daily limits for booking meetings and a lot more. Uh, I need to check if that integrates with... Uh, with with both my jobs um in my in my business it's it's easy but uh, the other one's the problem so um i find huge value from the virtual meetings and certainly more effective but it's about planning your schedule i don't find it tiring in fact exciting but it comes with a strong mindset and positive um and then uh, there goes our oh, mel the mexican fisherman yeah it's 
be more with less. Yes. Um, so I, I, I probably screwed up that story a little bit, but um, but that's that's the basis of it. All right. So so let's continue. Um, so what are the signs? The sign. Maybe there's just one sign for me or one sign for you that uh, I must slow down. And and I think there's there's quite a, a whole host of things that uh, are important in, in order to do that. So the first one is that, you know, I'm forever feeling tired. Like even when I'm excited to go and do something, right? Even if it's something like I, I would sit here in the evening and I would go like, this is all the stuff that needs, uh, needs to get done tomorrow. And then it gets to tomorrow and I'm like, I just don't have the energy. I'm tired. And I think that is a big, big wake up call to say, hey, like you're tired. You are probably on the road to burnout or something that's happening. Um, so it doesn't matter how excited I am about something, doesn't matter how committed I am to something, I still feel tired. Uh, so if you also feel that, then that's maybe a sign. Um, I don't sleep well these last few few weeks, uh, even though I go to bed early. Uh, I've been dreaming quite a lot um, and about weird stuff, like things I can't share with you, <laughs> but weird things that I'm dreaming about. And it's like, it's telling me that my mind is busy with so many things trying to figure out what is going on, why is like, I can't make sense of it at this point in time. But there's also been times where I just I am I constantly wake up through the night um, and I'm tossing and turning basically and I'm really not sleeping well. And then even when I am sleeping well, so I go to bed like I'm so tired sometimes that at night I'm in bed and then I get up at seven in the morning. So I had a good sleep, but then I still feel tired when I get up. Sometimes on the weekend I decide that I'm just going to take a break and just sleep. And then I do that for a Saturday. I go and sleep <laughs> for most of the day. All feel tired. Um, I think these these things are really really shouting that you need to be slowing down. Um, and then also sometimes you know you 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 may battle to get excited about things. Um, you know, or you feel down a lot of the time. You have no reason. There's no reason to be down. You can't even put your finger on it. You just are not excited. You just are not not like you almost feel like you're not driven or anything like that. So then it's something to say. Well, whoa, what's going on? And then my body is absolutely screaming at me at this point in time. And I think that's also a clear, a clear message that, uh, you know, you look at aches and pains, red eyes, um, you, you get sick often. Now, I'm lucky that I haven't gotten sick a lot, uh, but I do have a lot of body pains and things on so my knee and my back and, 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 and my legs often. Um, I have a lot of that. So I think this is a clear, again, that's what my body is not telling me. It's freaking screaming at me that, listen, chap, you need to now make a serious plan. But these are definitely signs that one needs to be slowing down. And, and by slowing down, I'm not definitely not saying that one needs to stop. I'm definitely not saying that you need a time out. Um, if you go read a lot of stories about burnout, you will see that people, it takes them more than a year to recover from that. So it's not about that. For me, it's just to say that, listen, like we got to realize like how we built, how we meant to be doing things how we meant to view the world, how we meant to, to, to sort of view this journey that we're on and how we are supposed to be enjoying and really taking or getting the most out of this journey that we're on. But we don't. We, we're too busy with being busy and building businesses and making money to pay things at the end of the month and those kind of things. And it works well in the beginning. Like when you're starting off or maybe you haven't been going for a long time or it's, you've maybe started a new job recently, it goes well. It goes very well because it's something new and you're focusing and you know you've got to put in the work, you know you've got to put in the hours, the minutes in order to get it there. And then before you know it, you know, this isn't something like you, you realize that something's happening. It's just like you wake up one morning and then suddenly you feel like all these weird things or you start having pains or you start getting sick or you do things like that. So in that instance, it's been coming for a very long time. We just didn't recognize uh, that. So what areas are there in my life that I can slow down in? Um, in other words, areas in your life that you could possibly look at slowing down in. And I'm going to get more into the practical side of it as well, how to slow down and what the benefits are of slowing down. Because as I say, this isn't about taking a time out. This is not about going on a sabbatical or anything like that. So it sounds like doom and gloom when I say like all these things. It's just that there are these signs that are clearly like as we go on the road, there's these signs, but we stop looking at these signs, understanding that this is going to be a problem at some stage. If I don't stick within the speed limit, I'm either going to get a ticket or be arrested, depending on the speed that I'm going at. But we choose to ignore these signs or we become oblivious to them, I would, I would guess. 
So which areas in my life uh, can I slow down in? Well, very first one is health, uh, both mental and physical. Uh, so that's a very important part. If you look at, uh, you can go read any book about entrepreneurship or anything like that these days. Everybody is talking about, <clears throat> you've got to start with your health. If you want to build a successful business, you have to start with your health. So uh, the challenge that I'm sitting with, and probably some of you as well, is that I let my health go. And then I started a business. It's not like, you know, it was like, I did my business and then my health went backwards. I was already not looking after my health properly when I started a business. And uh, it's been seven years, eight years now that I've been on my own. So it's been many, many, many years. It's been since 2016 that I've been doing my training stuff, but I've been on my own since 2013, working from home pretty much from 2013. So all of these things are now starting to compound over time. And, and that's the one thing, you know, if you're only into this very early on, I mean, I think what a great blessing to be hearing these things now to become aware of them. If you're like me and you're already down the road and you are where you are, that's okay. Because I'm going to give us some, some ideas of how we can change this and what we can do. But your health is where you need to start before you do anything else. The second thing is relationships. So relationships with your spouse, with your children, with your family and with your friends. Because those are the people that are there when your business no longer is uh, I've seen it so many times that you work for a place and uh, you leave. Yeah, people may, may phone you a week there after to hear how you're doing or a month there after. But then everything continues as normal. You've been replaced. There's been somebody new and they run their thing. So business, yeah, it's important. But your spouse, your children, your family and your friends are a lot more important from a relationship point of view. And also you have to look at those friends and family in that relationship just because they are doesn't mean that they're good for you. So also that's another discussion on its own in, in its entirety. But definitely looking at relationships are, are very, very important. And then the third thing would be your business. And, and there's sort of these three aspects um, that I'm busy going through at the moment with my business. There's these three hats. And I had this conversation with Vessel Wistos in a few weeks back. Um, I always enjoy spending time with, with Vessel and, and, and we just talk about a lot of things. And on this particular day, there were some things that we were talking about and I was saying to him, you know what, like I need to, I don't know, there needs to be some structure and I need to, to reconsider some of the things and, and, and just... You know, not reconsider, but but more like tweak them. And, and it feels like, you know, the machine is running, but there's still a couple of things missing. And he said to me, Franco, the problem is, and we all know this, right? Uh, if you think about um, the e-myth, you think about, um, I want to tell you about a guest that's going to be coming on uh, her book as well. You know, all of these things are, are talking around like we're not spending time on our businesses. So what we typically do is that we do the work. So we're very good at doing the work. We love doing the work. We are naturally good at doing the work. Being a financial planner, an accountant, a tax practitioner, a bed salesman, <clears throat> doesn't matter what you're doing, you are very, very good at it and it comes natural. So to do the actual work is not the problem, uh, although it is the problem, uh, but it is not difficult to, to do that. The problem comes in with the other two hats. So the one is the worker hat, in my case, the content creator hat, um, or, or whatever it is that, that I'm doing. But then there are two other hats that are very important and we need to take time out to be able to go and think about these different hats. Uh, and when I put this hat on, and I'm, I've actually ordered myself some actual hats that I'm getting embroidered with these different things on them to help me do this practically. Um, so the second one is the CEO. You need to think about this as the director of the business or the CEO of the business, because that is the person who directs and have the vision and have the strategy for the business to take it forward and to make it happen and to make it successful. The, uh, that person looks at the structure of the business. It looks at marketing, the, 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 the um, strategy, the you know, client acquisition, the processes, like all of that stuff falls under the hat of the CEO. So that is time that you need to take out and have that hat on and spend that time on your business. The third one is talking about the, being the shareholder of a business. Now, you may be saying like, Francia, but I work for a, an insurance company. I'm just, uh, you know, there as, a, as an employee actually of that company. That's great. You still have a practice. You can still wear the hats of your practice. Because the way that you think about it as the worker, the way you think about it as the CEO, and the way you think about it as a shareholder or owner of that business, because remember the CEO and the owner is not the same. So if you went to invest into a business, 
What would you want to see? What would make that business more valuable for you? So those are the kind of things that you then need to look at it from that perspective. So it doesn't matter where you are in the industry, who you work for, whether you're on your own or you work for a product provider or another FSP, doesn't matter. In your practice, you can wear these three hats. And those are definitely three areas that one needs to slow down in. And uh, if I say like, it sounds like, oh, there's again, all these things we need to do in business, but you slow down by taking time out and actually putting the CEO hat on. You slow down by taking time out and actually putting the shareholder hat on. You're not taking time out by being the worker or the, the professional or the person delivering the services. Then you're not, you're definitely not taking time out. All right. Then um, what are the benefits of slowing down? Well, I think there's quite a lot of, of, of benefits if one can just slow down. And I'm, I'm excited to get to the how to slow down, uh, but, uh, but let's first talk about the benefits of slowing down. The first one is that I'm present. I'm not missing out on everything. I'm present in all the situations at all times. Tanya Kunza also spoke about this in one of the episodes here on the show. She's written about it in a book, uh, uh, The Power of Positivity, as well, the importance of being present. Because we don't have control over the future, we can't change the past, we all know this, you've seen the memes, you've heard people talk about it, you've read the books. But being present, you can only be present if you take time out, or if you slow down, okay, both of those. The next one is that I get maximum enjoyment. Because I'm present, because I'm experiencing, and I'm becoming aware, and I'm attracting gratitude, and I'm thankful for things, I'm actually getting maximum enjoyment from, from, from all of this. And the biggest thing about this, about going at the right pace, I believe the benefit here is that it helps me attain the four things that life really matters about, what, that we're all trying to attain or achieve in life. And they are very simply love. Because if I spend time with, with the right people, there will be love. If I don't feel tired all the time, if I do things that I want to do, if I do things that really matter, then I can love myself as well. So the freedom that comes with this, because I'm not locked in, I don't have to be here at 6 in the morning and go to bed at 12 at night or 3 in the morning or whatever. So there's freedom there. But there's also freedom of your mind. There's freedom of your heart. There's just this freedom that, that, that you can enjoy. The other one is peace. Because I have all of this, I have peace. Because my mind isn't busy all the time like it is now. Like non-stop, never stopping. My wife is talking to me and then I'm there for the first half and then my mind starts to wonder because there's things that I need to get done. And then I don't have the energy to get them done. And it's like, it's, it's this just, you know, the mala miele. It's just this craziness that goes on all the time that doesn't stop. And then the last thing I believe is that when you do have love, freedom, and peace, the joy follows. Absolutely. I don't think that you can have real joy in life unless there's love. You can't have real joy in life, in life unless you have freedom. You can't have real joy in life unless there's peace. So those things are extremely important. These are not my words. This comes from Martha Bach. She talks about the way of integrity. Um, so definitely something to go check out. And then... Um, I think the, the other benefit of this is that there's respect, one for myself and then two for others as well, because uh, if I respect myself, I will also respect what they want and, and their time, but also others will also have respect for me because they will see what I'm doing, they will understand why I'm doing it, and uh, there will be respect because often they would also wish that they could also do this and just you know slow down a little bit. And the funny thing here is that Tony Robbins talks about that you are, we, we totally overestimate what we can do in a year, but we completely underestimate what we can do in a decade. So we think we can do more in a year than we actually can because we're running at full pace, but we totally underestimate what we can do when we play the long game, when we try and get to the, you know, to what we can achieve in 10 years. But we tend to just focus on the year and the month and the day and the week. So by slowing down, by only focusing on the things that really matters, helps you actually go a lot faster because you can be more consistent, you can deliver better results, you can engage better, you can connect better. All of those things are benefits of slowing down. So before I get to how do you slow down, let me just quickly see um, what uh, people are saying here. Sorry, let me just go up. Um, 
Good stuff. So um, David says agree with sentiment. Mel says everyone is tired. I think we must remind ourselves to take more time off to rest and recover our bodies and minds. We have been through a pandemic. Absolutely. We, we chose to ignore that, right? Um, because we had to, we had to persevere and we had to be, uh, we, had to, we, need to, we need to have tenacity. So uh, that's what it took. Uh, that feeling, tired feeling is very much uh, linked to your purpose and integrating it with your passion. Once you got it connected to your why, you have a red, red bull in your body uh, and energy is abundant. Um, yes, uh, I agree, but I think physiologically it's still, you know, they always say if you love what you do and you align to your purpose, you won't be working a day in your life. But uh, I don't think uh, a lot of people are able to sustain that. Um, so you still need to slow down in my mind. Um, Tracy, it's even harder for us working moms. I can't even imagine. Uh, we were lucky that my kids also were out of school, both of them, before uh, the, the pandemic hit. So I, just, I can't imagine what it must be like to, to deal with those kind of things and, and manage children and be working and be in a pandemic and in lockdown. It's not, it's not. Definitely we need to slow down, take some breaks. Babies don't joke. They need that attention big time. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Tracy. Hamoto, uh, I've just come out of a phase like that of being constantly tired. I realize the importance of sleep. You need the six, seven hours sleep. Yes, absolutely. Um, da -da -da. Sometimes illness are due to exhaustion, says Hamoto. Yep, adding on to what you said earlier. Kavendra, I can relate to you. It's signs of depression or burnout. Um, your health is your true wealth. Yes, that is a powerful statement. Thank you, Kavendra. Um, Kovas, our MDRT whole person concept excuse me, is such an amazing philosophy to mitigate those life-chasing events. All stakeholders must form part of the whole person. Absolutely. And Kobus, I remember back in uh, 2019 when you and I did that interview for the podcast, um, we actually uh, spoke a lot about how you structure your, your, your life. And uh, I've, uh, that's always something, I've got a very clear plan of where I'm headed to and how I want my life to be. Uh, and it's inspired by, by what you've done. So, so getting there, slowly but surely, working on it. Um, but, but I think that's part of this whole person concept is that the way that you've managed to, to structure your year and your life, uh, that is why you can continue to work at the pace that you do, which is just mind blowing. Um, CEO of my life. Yes, Mel. Absolutely. Um, Stephen Howell just wanted to say good morning. Good morning, Stephen. Uh, Herman, a good book uh, I read about balance in your life is creating the seven habits that make a remarkable life. You can't give what you don't have by Greg Hebert. Thank you very much, uh, Hammond. That is a great share. So thank you very much. I'm going to leave it up on the screen a little bit if somebody wants to write it down. So then we can uh, move on to how do I actually slow down practically? Like what do you do to slow down? And hopefully when I share this with you, you'll see what I mean with slowing down. Again, it's not taking leave. It's not going on holiday. It is not, not, not taking a sabbatical or just saying, oh, I quit. Just I'm going to go fish somewhere in the Mexican village. That is not what it, what it is about. Uh, but what it is about is some practical things that you can do. So the first thing that you can do is to just literally take a day out. So I uh, need to put in the leave right now if you need to put in leave. If you can just book it out in your diary, book it out right now before the show ends. Decide on a day. Not like look at, I don't care actually what is in your diary. I don't care what is in my diary. Like, take a day and say, I'm going to take this day out of my diary right now. Cancel all those, those meetings, move them. I don't care how big the, the client is, how, how important the business is, how much you need that business. Because tomorrow, it's going to be again, important client, big business. I need the money. I need this. I need that. No, take a day out now. Because if you don't do it, it's not going, going to happen. Let everyone know, right, when you, once you've done that, let everyone know that you will not be available on that day. Just communicate and say, listen, something came up. I can't do it on this day. Please, can we move it? That's it, right? Take out the entire day and go alone. Decide to go to a place, preferably, I don't know, your favorite place to go, whether that's in nature or whether that's to the bush somewhere, which is also in nature, uh, or you just want to go to a nice place where you can sit at a hotel or you just want to get in your car and drive, just go sit at some place like Biden, like I do often. Go alone, just you, because you need to go and think, okay, I have no agenda, no plan, no nothing. Just go and do it. That's all you need to go and do. Right. When you are there, there are certain questions that you need to be uh, asking yourself. 
So let me just bring up, I've got some slides here for this one. All right. So some of the questions that you need to be answering for yourself is, what is really important to me? What is truly, truly important to me? So this is what, what your values are. Do you still know what your values are? Have you gone through a process to determine what those values are? A very solid one that I always recommend people uh, use to determine what is important to them is the Demartini value determination process. You can find it, it's for free on, on if you just Google Demartini value determination. There's a PDF that you can use, but there's also you can also do it online on his website where he then has videos and things that he talks you through each and every step. But what is important to me? What really matters? What are the things that, that are really, really, not the things that you think should be top of the list, not the things that we think society expects of us, or like if I have children, I have to put my children first. Maybe there's something else, but we, we don't want to say it because it's wrong. If I have a child, I can't say that learning is more important for me, or freedom is more important for me. Or spending time on my own is more important for me. I can't say those things because other people will think, geez, what kind of parent are you? And that's where the problem starts as well, that we don't align with what's really important uh, to us. And we don't, we, 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 we don't, uh, we're not honest with ourselves about it. We try and fit into something instead of just being who we are. So I can promise you that if you have children, they will feature somewhere on that list, definitely, because they are important. But you also need to recognize the things that you need to spend time on. And I did an exercise recently uh, with my team. And uh, one of the things that came out is that uh, there, there is a, a young lady there that has children. Uh, she's a single mom. And everything is her children and her children. And she said that, you know, it, it's because it has to be my children. Like, this is my life at the moment. But then she had this light bulb moment saying, but there's all these things that are also important to me that I really want to spend time on. And then she said, like, okay, so what's the plan? It's like, how can I involve my kids and we can do it together? I mean, how powerful is that? So make a plan. Like, if there are certain things that's forcing you to focus on certain things in your life at this point in time, what can you do to still make the other things happen? How can you incorporate these things with one another to make them happen? And I think that is such, such an important uh, thing. Uh, let me just go back. I think I was on the wrong slide there, actually. For the first one. Anyway, so um, the other big question, actually, that I start off with is, what am I truly after? And this is a big question, and this is the what I yearn for. And the four things that I, that I, that I shared with you is the only four things that people yearn for. It, uh, in Afrikaans, say um, that is, wana smach je? I mean, it's such a powerful word, smach. It's like when you lie alone in bed and you're thinking like, what, do I, what am I really, really after? It's love, freedom, peace, and joy. There, are no, there is nothing else because no money in the world is bringing you that. Okay? It's people. It's relationships. It's, it's feeling at ease with what you're doing. It is being energized. It's enjoying life, being aware. Like All the things we've spoken about brings you that. So you have to be clear, like, what are you after? Maybe you're only concerned with, with, uh, with peace. Maybe you're only concerned with freedom or only with love, and that's fine. But which of those things do you yearn for? So that, that's really the starting point. The other question that you need to be asking yourself is, what does my ideal life look like? And there's a few things that I sort of, and I did this exercise, like um, I've got this flip chart there. Everything is there. I see it every day. I look at it. I'm very, very aware of what, are the, what does my ideal, look like from, uh, ideal life look like from a personal point of view? Okay, so the things in my personal capacity, me, front of the individual, what does that look like? The second part is earning a living or your work or your business, whatever that may be. And the third thing is relationships. But then those are the three main ones. A big thing for me that I've added there that's really important to me is giving back. So how do I help others? What are the things that I can do without charging for it? What are the things that I can do to have an impact without charging for it? So those kind of things. And often you first need to sort out the personal and the earning a living and the relationships before you can do that. But that's what's in my heart. That's what I want to do. So that's the ultimate thing that I will get to at some stage. And if there's a little bit that I can do in between, I'm already doing that. But that's the other question. What is your ideal life? You need to write it down. I happen to have written down 10 things. So some of the things, um, you know, from a personal point of view, is obviously my, my, my health is a big thing. 
I need to figure that out. In terms of earning a living, there's a few things that I'm really after. I only want to work four days a week. That's a big thing. And the other big thing is I want to work from anywhere. I don't want to be bound. I actually want to sell everything I've got and just go and live. If I want to go live in Cape Town for six months, I want to do that. If I want to go live in Spain, I want to do that. But I want to work from there. I want to do what I do. doesn't matter where I am in the world. So that's the one thing that I, that I, that's definitely important. And then the relationships is really just being present and having those quality relationships and conversations uh, with, with Yonita and with my kids as a start, you know, um, because I don't think I, well, I know that I'm not that, that present as I should be. I try to be, but, you know, like the mind is a very strong thing. So, so I really want to, that's what I want my life to look like. And it just happened to be like when I wrote those 10 things down, I was able to group them into personal earning a living and the relationships. I didn't look at each. I just wrote 10 things down of what I want my life to look like. And then I looked at like which of these things belong together. And that's how I came up with a personal earning a living and the relationships. And there just happened to be three things in each of those. So now I'm busy with planning for each, for one aspect in each one of those three categories that I can actually just go and implement. Um, so, so that's a question. We just spoke about what is important to me. Then the other big one is what would I be doing if money was no concern or issue or money was like I had enough money in the bank. I could do anything I like. What would I actually be doing? And I asked this question again to my team a few weeks ago and it was amazing to hear the answers. None of them said I want to be an account manager or I want to be, you know, like whatever. They had different things that they were saying. I would be doing this. I would be helping there. I would be offering this. I would be, and it's amazing because it feels like that's your calling. But we go down the route of life or the road of life and we find ourselves in a certain position and now we think like, this is it. This is where I need to stay. I'm not going to get out of this. But you can. This is a clear indication that you possibly you're not doing what you should be doing. Or you can then go and say, okay, so if that is what I would really want to do, how do I use what I'm doing right now to make this happen? It's part of the plan. We need to connect these things to, to, to one another. And then the last question I think uh, we should be answering when we go out for this day, wherever you're going, is what have I always dreamt of doing? That childhood dream, that big dream. I laugh, for, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're a broker consultant or you are uh, in account management or anything like that, <laughs> I have some people telling me, you know what, I dreamt when I was small of being a fireman, but I never thought like I would be putting out fires all day long <laughs> as part of my job. So now I am a fireman, so be careful what you wish for. But, um, yeah, what is that thing that you, like, since you were a child, you said, like, one day I'm going to be, or one day I'm going to do, because we lose those things, we forget about them. But all of these things are actually going to help you understand what you're really after, what is really important to you, and, 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 you know, maybe how do you incorporate these things and make it a reality through what it is you do as a financial planner uh, or, or any other financial professional uh, in that sense. All right, so uh, those are just the five questions that uh, you should be asking yourself uh, as far as those are, are concerned. So uh, let me just bring that back. So there we go. Um, then the third thing, so now we've decided like what's, what's really important in answering these questions. Uh, the third thing that you can do is make decisions then based off of these answers and commit fully. You have to commit so that you can confidently say no to other people because what's happening at the moment is that people are flooding your diary to see you and to talk to you and you feel like I need to treat everybody the same. You feel like I need to do everything for everybody. And if you're like me, you have this responsibility as part of your strengths or your talents, then it's a problem because you can't say no. But if you're very clear on how you want to lead your life, what you want to do and how you're going to attain this, it's easy to say no to people because you are able to prioritize and you can still say no in a very nice manner. Or what you could do is start putting systems and processes and people in place in order to take some of these things away from you so that your business or your practice doesn't lose, lose out on those opportunities, but you are able to slow down and focus on the things that you really need to be, to be focusing on. The fourth thing that you can do uh, from a, from a, like to, to, to slow down is to break everything you do down. Like break everything, every single thing, break it down. And this is what sort of the challenges, for instance, what we do on Propulsion Pro. That's, an, that, that's one form of breaking things down. So instead of trying to sit down and 
I don't know, update your LinkedIn profile. It's a massive process. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that. I mean, it's, it's a massive process just to create the, 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 the thing in the first place. But then to really hone in your message, to really structure it and move things where they need to be, that's going to be most valuable, that takes so much time. And again, nobody's going to sit down for a whole day. It's so frustrating working on the same thing the entire day. So by breaking it down, you spend a little bit of time on different things during your day. But you do it consistently, you do it every day. And then suddenly these things start picking up momentum. You're seeing results because things are getting done. So instead of trying to put all the effort in in one go, and there's people that prefer that. There's, I've had discussions where people say to me, no, if I focus, I'm focused and I'll sit and I'll finish it. I can't do a bit of this, a bit of that. That's up to you. That's your personality. That's your way that works for you. But when you do feel overwhelmed and you do feel like it's this massive task and while you're busy with this one thing, you're so worried about a million other things, just break it down and then do a little bit every day on each one of those things. It will move along and it will move along quite quickly. And you will always have, also have this variety of things that you can then do. The last thing then is to, uh, what I love this Latin phrase, acta non verba, action over words. You need to, because that's why I said you need to commit. Now you need to implement and stay the course. So whatever you decided here, that now needs, you need to commit 100% and do it. This is again, I was telling my wife, you know, uh, we were at the bookstore, I was buying two books. I bought Kim Potgitter's book and I also bought Daniel Strauss's book on thinking like a billionaire. And uh, we were standing there and I said to her, you know what, there's all these books, a lot of the stuff we know, a lot of the stuff we've read before, uh, there's this, like, we know these principles. And it makes me think about Napoleon Hill that wrote Think and Grow Rich. He had all the gold. I mean, that's one of the most successful selling books ever in the history of mankind. It's got all the secrets to really making money, you know, doing things right, um, just building a life that you want. Yet he died a, a poor, broke man. So he had all the knowledge in the book, but didn't implement one thing. So it's about the doing. Like, and it's not always easy starting to do these things. It's hard. But there is a way to, to, to do that. So that is uh, slowing down to go faster. If you do this, you'll be amazed at how quickly things start to happen. And I can, again, I'm not going to tell you again the story of the show, but it's exactly what we experience with the show. It's amazing. You just do a little bit every single day and it picks up momentum and it starts going. And that's what you need to do. You need to have long-term patience. You can have in like short term, you can be impatient and in a haste, but long term, you need to be patient. And that's one of the big benefits of going slower is that you learn to be patient. All right. But again, up to up to your things. Um, so let's say, um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, Kobus, I strongly believe we must live our lives like tomorrow will not be there. Uh, yeah, what if tomorrow never comes? Eh? Uh, take your 24 hours out of your day productively. Live your life fully as we only have one on this earth. Great show. Thank you uh, very much. Um, Martin, so I'll try your bell. Uh, the trick with LinkedIn is to keep it updated with every change, Rancho. Do not get behind. Yeah, but so many people is like they create that profile and then they never look at it again. Like I look at it once in a year and a half, two years maybe. Um, so yeah. Uh, I stopped making to-do lists uh, to do my lists. <laughs> yes, Mel, so if you do a to-do list, uh, to do your lists, if a list is on a list, that's a problem, eh? I commit to, do, to not uh, but to do three things every day, and if I finish those three, I do the next item. Takes the stress, absolutely, that's great advice. Uh, and uh, Razan says, we need to give ourselves and others grace. Great show and valuable input. Thank you very much, Rizan. So with that, uh, let me get into the last segment before we run out of time. Uh, this is uh, the updates. These are some important things that you need to know, some exciting announcements as well. So stay tuned, uh, and I'll see you on the other side of this. Cool beans. Right. So the first thing is that I want to announce some upcoming guests that I'm very excited about. Uh, this will probably be in, in, in June. Well, the one is definitely in June. It's been confirmed. The other one, I'm just waiting for the confirmation to come through. We've already agreed that you will come on the show. Uh, so I have Lisa Linfield. Lisa was supposed to be part of the Women's uh, Week last in, in August last year. Remember, we had that whole series of, of or the entire month of August, not, not the week, it was the entire month of August. We only had women on the show as guests. 
in every single episode that we did. And uh, Lisa was supposed to come on and then there were some things that happened and she couldn't. Uh, so I'm very happy to, to have her on on the 11th. Uh, I think she's coming on on the 11th is when she'll be on. And then also Yonita Foster. Thank you, Yonita. Very happy about that one. Um, so I've been trying or been wanting to ask her and then there's an opportunity that came up and uh, she said yes. So really excited about that. Then um, I will be in Cape Town on the, when is it, the 18th, uh, the 18th of June. Uh, so we're going to be broadcasting live from Cape Town. Uh, I don't know why I get emotional now. Like, it's just like amazing stuff happening. Anyway, so uh, I'll be in Cape Town on the 18th of June. I'm actually there for the entire week from the 14th. Uh, but the 18th of June, we'll be broadcasting live from, where is it? Boschendal. Boschendal for the Carpenars. If you know where Boschendal is, I will be uh, doing that. So I am looking for a guest or guests even uh, to come and join me live. Uh, so if you are in Cape Town and, and interested, get in contact with me uh, via the WhatsApp or um, yeah, I don't know how else, uh, the website, I would despropulsion.co.za, you can also contact me there. Uh, but if you're interested, uh, and then we can have a discussion and see what we'll talk about. Uh, so if you want to be on the show uh, live, you're welcome. And then uh, the other thing is also if you want to just join us and just come and sit there and watch and have breakfast on your own account, unfortunately, uh, but you're also welcome to, to do that. It will be still 7 o'clock in the morning uh, from Boschendal. I will give you more details as I know more probably in that week, uh, but we'll definitely be, be there unless Cyril, Uncle Cyril says that we can't travel, but uh, for now that's the arrangement. Then uh, our next CPD event happening this coming Wednesday um, at 7 p.m., so 7 o'clock at night, live. Uh, Johan Fosler will be joining me. And this is not about, you all know Johan from, from Comspace. Uh, this is not about Comspace. Uh, this is all about revenue management and planning and how you can use that to build a better business and to make great decisions in your business. That's what it's about. It's not about your yes, software. And let me show you what, it's not going to be a demo. None of that. We're going to be talking about tangible things that you can go and implement right after that session and you'll be earning CPD. So it's free for Propulsion Pro members uh, and then anybody else is 350 Rand. And if you're a Profile Me client, you get a bit of a discount. You only pay 300 Rand. So go check that out. Uh, the hey, Too many things to click here. Um, so where can you register? You can go to propulsion.co.za forward slash revenue uh, and it'll take you there. So everybody needs to go and register there, whether you're a Propulsion Pro member or not. You go and register at propulsion.co.za revenue. You will just indicate that you are a member and there won't be anything payable. Uh, the rest will all happen automatically. You will get your, you've got to get two emails. The one email will say that you are, that you are registered and that we can we confirm your booking. The other one will then send you a unique link that you need to use for the event itself. So uh, look out for those two. Then uh, the other thing that I do want to announce is just the 10 day LinkedIn challenge starting on the 7th of June. This is free for Propulsion Pro members. Uh, anybody else, you can also join. Uh, so you can find more information at propulsion.co.za forward slash LinkedIn. And again, this is, a, this is a very good example of how you can break things down. Because what we're going to be doing, so whether you're starting off with LinkedIn or you're already on LinkedIn, but you want to revamp uh, your profile to really become an effective profile that do what you want it to do, then this is the challenge for you. It's going to happen over 10 days. And uh, what we are going to be doing is every day there's a little bit of work to be done. And then at the end of 10 days, you're going to have this amazing, unique uh, profile that is just for you. Your profile is going to look completely different than anybody else's. It's going to do something completely. It's going to say something completely different. But it's going to be attracting and talking to your ideal clients and uh, also showcasing how you help them and what you do for them and all of that good stuff. So really join us for, for that one. We're going to break it down step by step. It's going to be easy to follow along. Uh, there are some work that you need to do. This is not just a watch a thing and then, okay, there's some work that needs to be done every day. Uh, but come and join us for that. Uh, you can register. If, you, if you're a member, if you're a Propulsion Pro member, just go onto the community, the Propulsion Pro app or community, and go and register there. Uh, you can just go to programs and join the challenge there. If you're not a Propulsion Pro member, you need to go to propulsion.co.za forward slash LinkedIn, and you can register and pay there to be part of this. Then um, also uh, on the 23rd to the 25th of June, uh, we have the uh, Next Gen 21, 2021 
global financial planning conference happening uh, over 100 speakers uh, three days uh, four continents five five main themes that we cover and we we start off in south africa on the 23rd at uh, i think it's 10 in the morning here in south africa so starting off the conference so we launch it and then it takes a, on a life like it goes to australia to the us and to the uk where it ends on the 25th so over 100 speakers really really valuable come and listen uh, if you're a propulsion pro member you still get 80 percent off if you book and pay before the 31st which is monday uh, the 31st of may and uh, if you're not then you can also just go to propulsion.co.za forward slash conference and uh, you can go and register there uh, if you're a member you use the same thing but on the community we show you how to unlock your 80 percent discount so you can have a look there so go check that out and then lastly the last thing that i need to uh, announce as well is then also our very own financial planning institutes convention that takes place from the 25th to the 26th of october really excited about this one i think the it's such a great theme this year the future is human so uh book that uh, whether you're uh, a, a, an fbi member or not you're able to attend so go check that out and uh register now and book uh, to attend this. This is going to be, I think, I'm, I'm, uh, I can't remember now the venue, but uh, it's not going to be at the convention center. I think I saw it somewhere else. So, but it's going to be a face to face convention, hopefully, if everything works out. But be that as it may, an amazing, amazing conference with an amazing topic and amazing speakers. Uh, I've had some insights into some of the speakers that will be there and uh, really excited to, to hear that. All right, it's been a bit of a long show this morning. Uh, let me just quickly run to the comments before we finish off. Um, let's just go have a look here. Where was I? Uh, Yvonne from to do to be list to from to do to to be list. Yes, I need to be a rapper like from to do to be list. Thank you, Yvonne. That's amazing. Um, Julie Hughes, thank you, Francho. Another great show. Food for thought. Thank you so much. Shamine, this was very, this was really, I'm so battling this morning. This was really insightful. I find myself in the same boat. Thank you for the solution-based ideas. It's a pleasure, Shamine. Thank you so much for being here and for saying hi and for, for sharing your, your, your thoughts. Uh, well, I look forward uh, to Lisa. I have been following her. Yonita is great. Yeah, I love Yonita's energy and I've been waiting such a long time to speak to Lisa. She was first on my list last year and I couldn't get her on, but now she's coming. Um, Cool stuff. Uh, already registered for Johan Fosler. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Uh, Homozo, thank you for another great show and great message. Thank you, Brian Jarvis. Nice to see you. We need to catch up, my friend. Uh, and Inanda Club. Okay, Inanda Club. There we go. Like a donkey quivers. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with that, have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for being here and for all the support. And uh, please tell people about the show. Please send the links around. I will really appreciate it. Help me get the word out. Um, it's... Uh, it's, it's all I can ask. Uh, but thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you back next week. Same place, same time. Bye.